Okay, so on number one, Kindle, what would I need to do first before I can add those mixed numbers? Absolutely, I've got to turn them into improper fractions. And we were just talking about how on that negative three and two thirds, what do we do with the negative sign? Bring it down. <coughs> so I'm going to bring down my negative and then change it just like I normally would. So I'm just going to multiply three times three is nine plus two will give me 11. So that's going to be negative 11 thirds. Kendall, what would five and five twelfths become? Yes, yeah, 65 twelfths. All right, so I've changed them to improper fractions. Once I've done that, Addie, what would my next step be? Absolutely, we've got to find a common denominator. What did you use for yours, Addie? What did you use? So, I think she said she Like, she mul you multiplied three times four. Yeah, because we want to use 12 as our common denominator. So, 3 times 4 would give me 12, and that means I need to multiply that negative 11 by 4 also. So, what do I need to make sure to keep in front of my first fraction? Negative. That negative sign. So, I'm going to keep my negative. 11 times 4 would give me 44. 3 times 4 is 12. So, now I have negative 44 twelfths plus 65 twelfths. I know my denominator is going to be what? And then I need to add my numerators. What does negative 44 plus positive 65 give me? 21. So I have 21 twelfths. And then since we started out with mixed numbers, we want to change it back to a mixed number at the end. So how many times will 12 go into 21? Once with how many remaining? Nine. So 1 and 9 twelfths. But then I think that 9 twelfths can simplify. What would it become? So, one and three-fourths would be our final, final answer for number one. Okay, number two. If I'm finding the range, I'm finding the distance between those two numbers. So, Luna, is this going to be an addition problem or a subtraction problem? Subtraction. Absolutely. I'm subtracting the numbers, and then what do I need to put around my subtraction problem? Okay, I'm making them with my hands. What are these symbols called? Absolute. absolute value bars. So I'm subtracting the numbers and I'm taking the absolute value of that difference. So I'm going to subtract negative 16 minus 42 minus negative 42. Okay, so I'm going to keep my absolute value bars and subtract what's inside. Now, Negative 16 minus negative 42. I can either just type that whole thing in my calculator or I could change it to an addition problem because subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding a positive. So you can type it either way into your calculator. What should I get? 22. Let's check that again. Yeah, 26. I probably just heard you wrong. So I have positive 26 and then the absolute value of that would still be what? 26. So the range between those two numbers would be 26. There's 26 numbers in between negative 16 and negative 42. Okay. Now, for number three, first I just need somebody to read this first statement to me. Freeland, how would I read that? Negative 6 is less than negative 7. Negative 6 is less than negative 7. Okay. So guys, is that statement true? Is negative six less than negative seven? No. Because remember, when we're dealing with negative numbers, you want to think, okay, negative six is further to the right on the number line than negative seven is. So it wouldn't be less than, it would be greater than. So that one's not true. All right, now I need a different volunteer to read this second statement to me. Bella? Three-fourths is greater than five-sixths. So we're trying to figure out, is three-fourths greater than five-sixths? So if I'm comparing those two fractions, there's lots of different ways I could compare them. River, what did you do to compare those two numbers? Okay, so what did you do? Okay, yeah, one way that y'all learned in elementary school is to cross-multiply. 
So when you're doing that, you're really finding a common denominator for those fractions. It's just a shortcut for doing that. So 3 times 6 would give me 18. 5 times 4 is 20. Therefore, which fraction is actually greater? The, the one that says yeah. it's less. Yeah. 5, 6. Okay, so do we have a true statement here? Is 3 fourths greater than 5, 6? No. No. We also could have turned them into decimals. 3 fourths I know is 0.75. When we change 5, 6 to a decimal, what do we get? If you haven't done it, you can do it in your calculator right now. Point eight three repeating. So that number is actually larger than this number. So this statement is incorrect. All right, the third one. I need someone else to read this one to me. You don't have to say the decimals correctly. You can say negative six point one two five. All right, Kessling, try. Negative six point one two five is greater than negative six point one three five. Okay. So looking at our place value. The ones places match, the tenths places match. So really we're comparing that hundreds place. Would negative six and twelve hundredths be greater than negative six and thirteen hundredths? Yes. Mm -hmm. It would be further to the right on the number line. So this statement is true. Okay? And then we have eleven eighths is less than 26 11. So this is another fraction problem. We can do what again to compare those? Cross multiply. All right, guys, so what does 11 times 11 give me? 11 times 11. 121. Okay, and then what about eight times 26? Okay. So is 11 8 less than 26 11? Yes. Yeah. So those last two were true statements. The first two were not. And these are the type of statements that we're going to be dealing with today. We've kind of finished equations. We're moving into inequalities today. So all of these would be inequalities because they're comparing two numbers. One is greater than the other. They're not equal to each other anymore. All right, number four, translating the words into an equation. Five less than one-third a number is 17. Landon, how did you write that one as an equation? Uh, n, over, n over three minus five equals 17. Absolutely. One-third a number would be dividing that number by three. Five less than that would mean we're subtracting five from the end. And then is 17 means equal 17. Beautiful. What's a different way that we could have written it? N divided by 1 over 3 minus 5 equals 17. We wouldn't want to divide N by 1 third. What is 1 third a number? Wouldn't that be the same thing as 1 third of a number? So that word of means what operation? Multiple. Yeah. So we could have also written as 1 third N minus 5 equals 17. Either one of those would be correct. Okay, y'all. So moving into some inequalities, but before we do that, I do want us to look at the quiz from last time. So you can pull that up in your edge elastic. I've made it to where you can see the questions that you got right and wrong. in your grade section it would be the unit 5 quiz 1 writing and solving equations quiz and most of us did really well on this so I don't think we have a whole lot to go over but I did want to talk about question 8 or it's question 8 on mine it's the one where you had to choose the step that Matt went wrong and then solve the equation correctly and I messed up on that one when I was typing in the question there were actually two mistakes in Matt's problem. 
So first, when he added 6, he forgot to bring down 16 instead of 10, but that wasn't one of your answer choices because Miss Spikes just messed up when I was typing that part. So the correct answer would have been that he should have multiplied both sides by 3 over 2 to get rid of that 2 thirds in step 2. But what I ended up doing was just giving everybody credit for question 8 because it was written incorrectly. So that was an unfair question to y'all. What's in you? It technically would be 10 because the problem is that x times equal 4. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, really I should have had a 4 there and then plus 6 would have given me 10. So I was thinking ahead when I typed that step. Anyways. I just messed up when I was typing, and I didn't want to lead y'all astray, so I just gave everybody the points for question A. Most of y'all did a good job of solving it. You went back to that original equation and solved it correctly, or either you went to this step and solved that one correctly. So that's really what I care about. All right, going through, are there any other questions that we have questions about or want to see worked out on the board? Bree, when which one's in? Can you work out um, number seven? Yes, let me see if I have that one on here already. Let me get it pulled up real quick. While I'm getting that pulled up, y'all keep looking and see if you have any others that you need to see. So I have question seven. Did we see any others that we need? Um, right. Can you work some more two, please? Yes. So for number seven, we're solving that equation. So first, I need to simplify whatever I can. So I'm going to distribute that negative four to my parentheses. So negative four times three should have given me negative 12. Negative four times x should have given me negative four x. <clears throat> Do I distribute that negative four to that 11? No, it only goes to what's in my parentheses. So my plus 11, I just bring down. And then equals negative 75. All right, then I've got some like terms that I can combine. So that negative 12 plus 11 would give me negative 1. I'm going to bring down my minus 4x equals negative 75. Then how would I get rid of that negative 1? Yeah, use a positive 1. So I'm adding 1 on both sides. So if those cancel out, I would need to make sure to bring down that negative 4x. And then this is where I saw a lot of people messing up just as people were like asking me questions during the quiz. Right here where you have negative 75 plus 1, what does that give you? Good, right? Yeah, negative 74. I saw a lot of people writing either 76 or negative 76 right there. Okay, and then last step would be to divide by negative 4. So what do I get when I divide negative 74 by negative 4? Eighteen 18.5, and that would have been our correct answer. So that's what I was looking for on that one. Okay, and then on number 2, translating one half the sum of a number and four is 20. So you're taking half of that entire sum. So that sum of a number and four needs to be grouped in parentheses to show that you're taking half of all of it. So then you would be multiplying that whole thing by one half. So C 
would have been our correct answer. Okay. Any other questions before we move on? All right, then y'all can close your computers and we'll look at our notes page. I don't think the notes are going to take the whole class today. I hope not. I hope we have a little bit of chill time at the end. Today's lesson, we're keeping it very basic. We're just going to kind of try to understand what an inequality is, what it means to have like x is less than 4 or x is greater than or equal to 4, and kind of what that looks like on a graph. So, we were talking about in our bell work that inequality is a comparison statement. You're comparing two numbers or two terms that are not equal to each other. One is greater than the other. So instead of having an equal sign, we're going to have one of our inequality symbols. Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So when you're graphing on the number line, which y'all did some of that in sixth grade, the ones that do not have a bar underneath them, just the less than and greater than, they're going to have an open circle on your graph. Because that means that the number that your circle is on is not included in your solution set. So like if I had x is greater than 2, that means x can be any number that is above 2. But can it be 2 exactly? No. No. So on our graph, we would have an open circle on 2 because 2 is not included in the solution set. And then we've got just some keywords that go along with that symbol. So greater than, obviously is more than, larger than, above, all of those would match up with this symbol that means greater than. Okay, and I want you all to write greater than in that column. You probably know it, or at least think you know it, but people get these symbols confused all the time. All right, what kind of symbol is this next one? Less than. Less than, so we're going to write that. And once again, this would be an open circle on a number line. If you have x is less than 2, that means x can be any number below 2 on the number line, but it can't be 2 exactly. So we would have an open circle on 2. And then a few keywords, less than, fewer than, is below or is smaller than. All of those would match up with that less than symbol. All right, what is this next one called, Landon? Uh, greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. I'm going to have to write really tight. Okay, so is greater than or equal to is at least, because guys, if I have to have at least $20 to buy a shirt, is the cashier going to let me give her $19? No. No, I have to have $20 or more to be able to buy those shirts. Not less than, no less than, at minimum, if you have to have a minimum of a 60 to pass the class, that means you have to have a 60 or higher. Not smaller than and no smaller than. And then if we had X is greater than or equal to 2, we would have a closed circle on 2 on our number line because this time X could be 2 or anything higher than 2. All right, what's our next one called, Kendall? Less than or equal to. Okay, so at most, if I can have at most 25 kids in my room, can I fit 26 kids? No, it has to be 25 or less. So less than or equal to 25. No more than, kind of the same thing. No more than 25 kids means I cannot have anything above 25. At maximum, if you can make a maximum of 100 in the class, that means your grade can't be anything above 100. It can be 100 or anything lower. No greater than, not greater than, and does not exceed, does not go over that amount. So all of those would match up with that less than or equal to symbol. And this is another one where we would have a closed circle on the number line. If x is less than or equal to 2, that means it could be 2 or anything lower. So there would be a closed circle on that 2. 
And then this is a symbol that you might not have seen before. All this means is, is not equal to. Good. So yeah, if I had x is not equal to 2, then that means x can literally be any number in the world except for 2. So we would have an open circle on 2, and everything else on our number line would be shaded. Okay. So, today we're going to be kind of translating some words into inequalities and graphing those inequalities. So, if we had a number q plus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 7.9. We could translate that into an inequality. We've got our variable q plus 5, and then our greater than or equal to symbol, negative 7.9. So we're going to do that, the same thing with these two problems below. So if our number x is at most negative 10, I know I'm comparing x and negative 10. So I'm going to go ahead and write those two things. But then I need to figure out what symbol needs to go in between them. So what symbol would match up with at most negative 10? Starting out, what you think? So it wouldn't be greater than or equal to, because if it ha if it's at most negative 10, that means negative 10 is the highest it can be. Cruz, what do you think I need? Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to, yeah. So, I'm gonna, so guys, does this symbol mean less than or equal to? No, what do I need to fix about it? The way it's Yeah, I need to turn it the other way. Your less than symbol kind of makes a slanted L turns the same way an L does. So it's L less than. All right, so X is less than or equal to negative 10. That means the highest it can be is negative 10. All right, twice a number Y is more than negative 5 halves. So how do I show twice a number Y? How do I write that? Yeah, 2 Y. And I'm comparing it to negative 5 halves. And it says is more than. So what symbol do I need between those two? Just greater than. So 2y is greater than negative 5 halves. All right, number one, two is less than a number. So I'm comparing two with some other number. What do I need to use to represent that other number? A variable of some kind. So I'm going to use an n, two and n. And then if two is less than that number, what symbol do I need in between those? A less than symbol. So like that? Other way, right? All right, four more than a number is greater than or equal to five. So how do I show four more than a number? Plus yeah, four plus n, we're adding four to that number. So four plus n, and then that's gonna be greater than or equal to five. So what symbol needs to go between my 4 plus n and my 5? Mm -hmm. Greater than or equal to. That one was kind of obvious, wasn't it? All right, guys, I want y'all to try number 3 and number 4. Jot those down on your paper for me.
All right, so if the maximum value of a number is 28, well, it's not here today. Bella, how could we write that in? Mm -hmm. Very good, yeah. If that's the maximum value, that means 28 is as high as that number can go. So n could be exactly 28 or anything lower than 28. So we're in the, we need that less than or equal to symbol. All right, the sum of a number of 9 is at least 81. Darnell, how would I write that one? Okay, so Darnell, if it's at least 81, if I have at least $20 to buy a shirt, can I bring $19 to the cashier? So I don't want anything less than 81. What do I need to change that symbol to? Yeah, greater than or equal to 81. That at least is kind of tricky because it sounds like it should be less than or equal to, but if you think about it in terms of money especially, or in terms of your grade, you have to have at least a 60 to pass. That means you need greater than or equal to a 60. Okay, so a solution to an inequality is anything that we can substitute in for that variable and make the inequality true, just like a solution to an equation. So the only difference is in an equation, how many answers do we have? One because you always got x equals 2, or x equals negative 18.5. That's one solution. In an inequality, if x can be like anything less than 5, how many solutions are there? A lot. It's a whole lot. Too many to even count. So, in inequalities, we have what is called a solution set. So, it's all the solutions to our inequality. So, if this is my inequality, x plus 2 is less than or equal to negative 1. We're going to test each of these values for x and see if it could be part of that solution set. So pretty much we're just testing to see if each of these values make the inequality true. Alright, so if my first value is negative 2, I'm going to substitute that in for x to see if it makes my inequality true. So instead of x plus 2... <laughs> I'm going to take two. negative 2 plus 2. And I want to see if that is less than or equal to negative 1. Alright guys, so what does negative 2 plus 2 give me? Zero. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 1? No. no, it's more than, because negative 1 goes... The left. Right. Negative 1 would be to the left of 0 on the number line, so 0 is actually greater than negative 1. So is that inequality true? No. No. So negative 2 would not be part of our solution set. All right, we're going to test negative 3 and see if it works. So instead of x plus 2, I'm going to have negative 3 plus 2. And I want to see if that's less than or equal to negative 1. So this is just like when we were checking our answers to equations, we would go back and substitute them into the original equation. That's exactly what we're doing right now. All right, so what does negative 3 plus 2 give me? Negative 1. Negative 1. So guys, is negative 1 less than or equal to negative 1? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's equal to, so that fits that description, right? So negative 3 would be part of my solution set. All right, next we have negative 4, so we're going to be adding negative 4 plus 2, and we want to see if that's less than or equal to negative 1. What does negative 4 plus 2 give me? Negative 2. Is negative 2 less than or equal to negative 1? Yeah, it's less than. It would be further to the left on the number line. So negative 4 would also be part of my solution set. What other numbers would be part of our solution set? Anything, anything up that goes from, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> anything further to the left, right? Negative 5 would be a solution. 
Would negative 100 be a solution? What about negative a million? Yes. Yeah, all of those numbers that are less than or equal to which of these? Where does our solution set start? Three. At negative three. So anything at negative three or below would be part of our solution set. All right, so I want you to do the same thing for A and B right here. I want you to tell if negative 2 would be a solution. So you're going to take that negative 2 and substitute it in for your variable and see if it would be part of your solution set. I'm going to put two minutes on the timer for that. And y'all can work with your tables if you need to. So for A, Y minus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 6. Um, Sydney, do you think negative 2 would be a solution for that in Polly? No. Okay, why not, Sydney? Because when you do negative 2 minus 5, you get negative 7. Gotcha. Okay. So negative 7, it wouldn't be greater than negative 6. It would be less than negative 6, right? So this would not be a solution. All right, what about for that inequality B? Negative 5.5Y is less than 14. Cruz, would negative 2 be a solution for that one? Yes. Okay, why is it yes, Cruz? Because when multiply the negative times negative equals a positive. True. Yeah, it equals positive what? And 11 would be less than 14. So that is true. So negative 2 would be part of the solution set for that inequality. All right, so what about number 3? If I substitute negative 5, because they're asking us if negative 5 would be part of the solution set, would negative 5 plus 12 give me something that's greater than 7? No. It'd be equal to 7, right? Negative 5 plus 12 gives me 7 exactly. And 7 is not greater than 7. It would be equal to 7. So that one would be a net. All right, I want y'all to do number 4 and number 5 real quick for me. 
So you're testing to see if negative five would be a solution to those inequalities. This time I'm just gonna put one minute on the timer because I think y'all have gotten fast at this. So for number four, River, what did we have to do to say whether or not negative five was a solution to that inequality? We have to times negative five by two. Okay, so I have one minus two times negative five. All right, so what did you get for that expression? Negative 10. Okay, so I have one minus negative 10, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and then what would one minus negative 10 give me? I'm pretty sure it's negative. Oh, a negative 11. Mm, one minus negative 10? It's a negative 11. Let me just type it again. Make sure you're typing minus and then negative 10. So one and then the minus sign, and then 10 and make it negative. Okay, guys, subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding a positive. positive. So 1 minus negative 10 would be the same thing as 1 plus positive 10. That should give us what as our? 11. Okay, 11. Is 11 less than or equal to negative 9? No. No. It would be greater than. So negative 5 would not be a solution for number 4. Questions on that one? I know that one's kind of tricky with that double negative. Okay, and then number five, if I'm testing to see whether negative five is a solution set to that one, Trey, what would I need to do? Absolutely. So I've got negative five divided by 2.5. What does negative five divided by 2.5 give me, Trey? Negative two. Negative two. So is negative 2 greater than or equal to negative 3? Yes, it is. It would be further to the right. So this time, negative 5 was a solution. Okay, are we feeling okay about that? Testing to see whether a number is a solution. Just substituting it in. Yes, no, maybe. We all act like we hate our life every day in this yes. class. Okay. <laughs> all right. The graph of an inequality shows that solution set. So it shows all the values that could be substituted in for our variable and make that inequality true. So we use an open or a closed circle to tell whether our boundary point or the number that we're comparing x to is a solution to that inequality or not. So like for x is greater than 2, we talked about this a little bit earlier. We just didn't have the picture of the graph to go along with it. So x is greater than 2 would mean that x is any number above 2. So all of these numbers above 2 are going to be shaded in on our number line. And then we have an open circle on 2 because can x equal 2? No. No, it has to be something above 2. All right, same thing for x is less than 2. We have an open circle because x has to be these numbers that are smaller than 2. They can't be 2 exactly. Once we have our greater than or equal to sign, and I apologize, my two kind of got cut off there. So this time, can x equal two? Yeah, if it's greater than or equal to two, that means it could be two 
or oh, anything cool. greater. So all of that is shaded in, the two and the numbers above two. Same thing for less than or equal to, to two. So it could be two or anything below two. So all of that is shaded in. And then we talked a little bit about this symbol earlier. For x is not equal to two, that means two is the only number that x cannot be equal to. So we would have an open circle on two, but then everything else on our graph would be shaded in because x can literally be any number in the world except for two. Okay, so flip into the back of your paper. We're going to be graphing some inequalities now. Okay, so if we have y is greater than negative 8, why are we using an open circle on our graph? Yeah, it's not going to be equal to negative 8. It's strictly greater than, not greater than or equal to. And then the numbers to the right of the number line are shaded in. Why are we only shading the numbers to the right of negative 8? Because all of those numbers are greater than negative 8. They're to the right of the number line, so they're going to be more than negative 8. Okay? So, would negative 16 be a solution to this inequality? No, because it's not shaded. What about 25? Would that be a solution? Yes. Guys, y'all look at it and tell me. Would 25 be a solution to that inequality? Yes. Yeah, it's greater than negative 8. If we kept that number line going, 25 would be on that number line and it would be shaded in, right? So it doesn't stop right there at the 4. It keeps going forever in that positive direction. Okay. So, if we are graphing the inequality, x is less than negative 1, where is my circle going to go on my graph? What number do I need to put that circle on? On negative one. So I'm gonna have a circle here. Is it gonna be an open or closed circle? Open. Okay, and then if x has to be less than negative one, am I gonna to need to shade the numbers to the left of negative one or to the right of negative one? To the left. So I would shade in all those numbers to the left of negative one because x has to be a number below negative one. All right, number seven, z is greater than or equal to four. So where is my circle going to go on my graph? On the four. Addy, is it going to be an open or a closed circle? Yeah, it's going to be closed because it's greater than or equal to. So I have a closed circle on four. And then, do I need to shade the numbers to the left of 4 or to the right of 4? Right. To the right, because I want all the numbers that are greater than or equal to 4. Now, guys, the next one's a little different. What do you notice about how number 8 is different from number 6 and number 7? Freeland, what do you see? Yeah, the number is before the inequality sign and the variable is after. In 6 and 7, the variable came first. And guys, it makes a difference, especially when we're graphing on a number line. So, whenever you see an inequality where your number is first, the first thing we're going to do before we graph it is switch it around to where our variable is first because that just makes it a lot easier to graph, okay? So, we have to think about how we could turn that inequality around. If 1.5 is greater than or equal to S, then how could I turn around that inequality to where I have S and then 1.5? What do you think, Breland? Um, you would do S is less than or equal to 1.5? Yeah, because if 1.5 is greater than or equal to S, that means S has to be less than or equal to 1.5. We're just kind of turning that statement around. Okay, and now I can graph it because now I can see clearly where all my solutions need to go. So what number am I going to need my circle to go on? 
1.5. So where is 1.5 going to be on my number one? Middle between one and two. Yeah, in the middle of one and two. Is that going to be an open or a closed circle there? Closed. Closed because it's less than or equal to. And then since S has to be less than or equal to 1.5, are we going to shade to the left or to the right? To the left. To the left. So all of these numbers below 1.5 are going to be shaded. All right, same thing with number 9. Our number is first before the variable. So we want to switch it around first. Okay, so instead of negative 1 half is less than t, how could I rewrite that to where my t comes first and then the negative 1 half? Guess what you think? Absolutely. T is greater than negative 1 half. We're just turning around that inequality. All right, so now T is greater than negative 1 half. I can graph that. Okay? Open or closed circle on negative 1 half? Open. Where do I need to plot negative 1 half? In between negative 1 and negative 2. Mm. Oh, wait, no. In between negative 1 in between zero and negative one. Yeah, in between zero and negative one. So I've got an open circle, halfway between zero and negative one, and then t is greater than negative one half. So which direction do I need to shade in? To the right. All right, number 10. If x is not equal to negative 6, what all is going to be shaded on that graph? Everything except for negative 6. Absolutely. Everything except for negative 6. What do I need to put on negative 6? Um, a open circle. An open circle, yeah. Because it's not equal to negative 6. All right, and then we shade everything else on that number line. Okay, I want y'all to do number 11 for me. Graph that inequality. Okay, so Kylie, before I could graph this one, what did I have to do? Switch it around. So instead of negative 3 is greater than y, how did you rewrite it? Yeah, y is less than negative 3. Okay, and then Kylie could graph it. Where do I need my circle? Mm -hmm. And what kind of circle is it? Very good. So I've got an open circle on negative 3, and then which direction do I need to graph in? To the left. So my graph should look like this. Open circle on negative 3, and everything to the left is shaded because y is less than negative 3. Okay. For number 11 and 12, we're kind of going the other way around. They've given us the graph. We need to write an inequality to match the graph. So on number 11, I've got an open circle on 12, and then everything to the right is shaded. So I know that I'm going to have some kind of variable. Let's just use an x. What number in a, am I comparing that variable to? 12, because that's where my circle is on my number line. Okay? Now, what symbol do I need in between that x and that 12 if it's an open circle and everything to the right is shaded? greater than, yeah, because all the numbers greater than 12 are shaded. So x can be anything greater than 12. Okay, y'all write me an inequality for number 12.
Kosen, what do you have for your inequality? I have x mm -hmm. is less than or equal to negative 4. All right. Do we agree with that? Yeah, we have a closed circle. So we know we're going to have some kind of or equal to symbol. And everything to the left is shaded, so that would be all of our numbers that are less than or equal to negative 4. Awesome. Okay. So now... We're going to be translating and graphing some inequalities. <laughs> so we're going to do number one together, and then I'm going to kind of turn y'all loose. So number one, it says a number y is no more than negative x. Okay, so first we're going to translate it. So I know I'm comparing y and negative x. If y is no more than negative x, Raise your hand if you think you know what kind of symbol needs to go in between those two things. Trey, what do you think, babe? Okay. Is it strictly less than? If it's no more than negative eight, could it be exactly negative eight? Yes. So I definitely agree with the less than, and I'm glad you said that instead of greater than. But I'm just going to add an or equal to, because if it's no more than negative eight, that means we just can't go above negative 8. It could be exactly negative 8 or anything less than that. Okay, so guys, then if you're graphing an inequality, whenever you're graphing and you have just a blank graph to plot it on, I want you to make sure to show the number that we need. So what number is my circle going to need to go on? Negative 8. Negative 8. So I'm going to put that negative 8 on my number line. And then we just need to show a number that's to the left and a number that's to the right. So what number would be to the left of negative 8? Negative 10. Yeah, negative 10 would be to the left. And then what's a number that would be to the right of negative 8? Positive 10. Yeah, sure. Positive 10. Okay. Then, guys, what kind of circle would I need on that negative 8? Closed circle. And which direction would my arrow need to point? If it's less than or equal to? To the left. To the left, because any number below or equal to 8 would work. All right, guys. On number 2 and number 3, you don't have to graph, obviously, because there's not any kind of number line. So all you're doing on number 2 and number 3 is just translating those words into an inequality. So I'm going to give you all one minute to translate both of those. You can talk with your groups to check. Number 10, multiplied by negative 4 is at least negative 2 fifths. Tess, how do you think we should write that inequality? Negative 4 um, t. Good. T squared is or equal to negative 4. Beautiful. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we're multiplying that number t by negative 4. We always write that as the number and the variable right next to each other. Tess did that perfectly. I do not want to see a multiplication sign in between those two. We're way past that. Okay, and then at least means it can be negative two-fifths or anything higher. So greater than or equal to negative two-fifths. Beautiful. All right, and number B, minus 4.2 is less than negative 7.5. Breland, how did you write that one? Uh, B mm -hmm. minus 
good. And then it was less than negative 7 seconds. Okay. So did I write that correctly? Yeah. Now I need to switch that symbol around, right? The reason I keep doing that is because people get them mixed up a lot. I see them writing in the wrong direction even though they're saying the right thing. So I always want to make sure that we're on the same page about which way that symbol needs to turn. Okay. So, this next one we're kind of testing to see if those numbers are solutions like we did earlier with that chart. So for number four, we've got the inequality n plus eight is less than or equal to 13. And we want to test and see if four is a solution. That's why it says n equals four. So if I'm testing to see if it's a solution to that inequality, what do I need to do with this four? Substitute in for n. So instead of n plus eight, I'm gonna have four plus eight. And I wanna see if that is less than or equal to 13. Okay, what is four plus eight? Well, is 12 less than or equal to 13? Yes. So four would be a solution to that inequality. All right, same thing again. I'm gonna give y'all a minute to do number five and number six. You're just testing to see if that number after the inequality is a solution to it. Luna, if I'm testing for number five to see if point one is a solution, what do I need to do first? You need to replace P with zero point one. Absolutely. So I'm going to start with that inequality, and I have zero point one plus one point four, and I want to see if that is less than or equal to zero point five. All right, so Luna, what did you get when you added point one with one point four? One point five. Okay. So is one point five less than or equal to zero point five? No. no. So that would not be a solution to that inequality. All right, and then for number six, Kendall, what do I need to do first if I'm testing to see if negative five is a solution? Yeah, multiply five times negative five, right? So I'm gonna have five times negative five and I'm trying to see if that's greater than negative 15. All right, so Kendall, what do we get when we multiply five times negative five? Yeah, negative 25. So, Kendall, is negative 25 greater than negative 15? <laughs> so, it has a greater absolute value, but think about where it would be on the number line. Is it going to be to the left or to the right? Negative 25. Is it greater than negative 15? No, it would be further to the left, so it's actually less than. So is negative 5 a solution to this inequality? No. no. All right. Almost done. Graphing a couple. And then we've got a food truck problem. All right, guys. So I think I'm going to let y'all go ahead and do all three of these. Number 7, number 8, and that food truck problem. You can work with your tables. I'm going to put three minutes on the timer, and I'll be walking around, so if you need any help from me, stop me.
So for R is less than or equal to negative 9. Bella, what do I need to show on my number line? Like what numbers do I need to show? Good. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. All right, and then Bella, what kind of circle did you have on negative nine? I had a closed circle. Good. Okay, and then what direction do I need to shade, right or left? Um, left. Left, because it has to be less than or equal to negative nine, so that would be all the numbers <coughs> below and at negative nine on that number line. All right, 2.75 is less than G. All right, River, before you started graphing, what did you do to that inequality? <coughs> I tried to get the other one. Absolutely. So, how do we rephrase it to where that G comes first? Uh, you switch it to you switch the great uh, the less than to greater than, mm -hmm. and you put the two point seven five on the other side. Absolutely. So G is going to be greater than two point seven five. So then, which numbers do I need to show on my number line? Uh, two point seven five. Okay. So I have two point seven five. What could I put to the left of two point seven five? No, three points, maybe. To the left? No, oh, sorry. Um, one. Yeah, we could put 1.75 to the left. And then 3.75. And then 3.75. Guys, I don't know why there's so much movement. We shouldn't be putting up our notes yet. We're not done going over them. Okay. And then, River, what kind of circle do I need on 2.75? That open circle. Absolutely. And what direction do I need to shade? Uh, what's it called? The right. Absolutely. All right, and then our food truck problem. Each day at lunchtime, at least 53 people buy food. I'm a food truck. I have a hair in my eye. It's driving me crazy. Write an inequality that represents this situation. Then graph the solution. Okay, so if I have at least 53 people buying food from the food truck, how could I write an inequality to match that, Tess? Absolutely. Doesn't matter what variable you use, just use an L to represent lunchtime. So greater than or equal to 53 because there's at least 53 people. Then if we're going to graph it, Landon, what kind of circle would I need on my 53? Absolutely. I'm just going to put 53 and then I'll put 50 to the left and 55 to the right. It doesn't matter as long as you picked a number that was less than 53 and greater than 53. And then Landon says we need a closed circle. And then Landon, which direction do I need to shade? We'll shade it right because it's greater than 53. Absolutely. All right, guys. So how do we feel about today's lesson? Pretty easy. Mostly review from sixth grade. Awesome. Okay. What do y'all think? Commute maybe to kind of review. No. <laughs> no. All right, we're going to do something else to kind of practice a little bit. So, um, would y'all rather do a Kahoot or a quizzes? Do you know what Kahoot is? Kahoot. So, I don't have a book at account for that. That's the problem with that. What were you? Okay, yeah. I do have an outlet right here. I have the charger that you can use. I don't worry about that. Okay. River, let me get this set up real quick and then I'll get it for you. Thank you. You're welcome.